Today is Maundy Thursday. This is the day when Jesus gathered together for the Last Supper with his disciples. Now, this is really an appropriate time to celebrate this day at our homes. When we're all gathered together at home, this is actually the context where it would have happened in a house, in a, in a large upper room, Jesus gathered around a table with his disciples. And so we today can gather with our families around our own table and reenact and remember some of the things that took place there. The prayer book introduces Monday Thursday this way. This is the night when Christ, the Son of Man, gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night that Christ, our Lord and Master, took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, calling us to love one another as he has loved us. This is the night that Christ, our God, gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his perfect sacrifice. This is the night that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. So what we do uh, in this celebration is, it's what, what we largely do with, with our children all the time. We read a scripture, and then we enact what we read. And we read something else, and we enact that, and so on. So the first thing we hear that happened on this day was that Jesus gave instructions to two of his disciples to go and prepare the meal. So after reading that scripture, we send two family members to set the table. Even the simple act of preparing the table, table setting is a chore every day, but this is even part of the scriptural meditation at this point in time. Now what do we set on the table? We would encourage you to have a simple meal. It's not Easter yet. We're still in the solemnities of Holy Week. So something sparse, maybe a meatless meal. Uh, we would encourage, of course, um, as was there on the table for Jesus and his friends, they had wine, so maybe cups of, of wine or grape juice, as is appropriate for the people in your family. And some unleavened bread would be, would be really fitting. And so you can go ahead and set that table up. That's the first movement. The next movement is the foot washing. Now for this, you'll need some sort of pitcher and a, a bowl of water and some towels. And then just as Jesus washed his disciples' feet, you can wash one another's feet. Perhaps if there are children in the house, parents are washing their children's feet together. But whatever the case, we get a chance to do what Jesus did. As he said to us, if I have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet a sign of his call to serve one another in our most basic, basic needs, even the, the cleaning of something as disgusting as a foot. But we wash our children's feet all the time, and we change diapers and other things like that. So this act of service is really something that many of us enact day by day. But now we do it in the midst of this celebration. After the washing of the feet, it's time for the meal. We have some particular blessings, blessings over bread and over wine, blessings which are expressing our gratitude for the fact that on this day, Jesus gave to us the sacrament of his body and blood, blessings over all of the food, for he is the one who gave it all, asking him to strengthen us for the, for the fast of the Good Friday that is before us. Then we eat the meal. But this is a different kind of meal, not just one where we sit and eat and tell jokes, but a meal where we are really still reflecting deeply on what happened. So as much as we can do, and I know sometimes the children around the table or something like that, it's harder, but we'd encourage you to have a reading during the meal, particularly the reading from John chapter 17. It's Jesus' prayer that he prayed on that night a prayer for the church, for his followers, for those who did believe in him and for those who would believe in him in the future, a prayer for us. And so as we hear that scripture and we eat that meal, uh, we then conclude simply with a prayer at the end, a prayer like the Our Father or something like that. Perhaps we'll sing a hymn together at the end before we go out. Now that is the reenactment of the Last Supper in a nutshell. Uh, later on in the evening, at 7.30, we will be streaming from the church a stripping of the altars. After Jesus went out from this dinner, that's when really the hour of darkness set in. And first you have his mournful prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Afterward, you have his arrest. And so recognizing that, the, the setting in of the hour of darkness, 
we have the stripping of the altars where all of the finery of the church is taken away and we're brought down to the starkness that is Good Friday. So after our celebration around the table, perhaps we can tune in and watch that together. Well, God bless you as you go and celebrate this. I know each family celebration will look different and I'll be delighted to hear um, stories of how it goes. And even if you want to send in any pictures to, to show us what happened, we'll be glad to compare notes afterwards. God bless you.